Welcome back to my channel. Today I visited my grandma Ma. She is an artist at 90 years old, almost. So she's not exactly my grandma, but she's almost like my grandma. She's married to my maternal grandpa's cousin. And the large family had been quite close and every year I visited their family during the Chinese New Year whenever I could. So our relationship was quite close emotionally. I always knew that she liked drawing but guess what she's still drawing at 90 years old and she's ever more passionate about art and she's going to classes every week and she's doing better and better going to exhibitions and I could even say that she's like a semi-professional senior artist and all her life was about art and her passion but her life was not always that glorious and smooth and artistic and romantic she had a difficult life like anyone who was born in 1930s she was born exactly in the 1930 that makes her exactly 89 years old this year she was born to a very wealthy family in Beijing that was the lucky part because a lot of people couldn't raise their kid at that time and it was just at the verge of Japanese invasion it was not safe to go outside and to play outside as kids so she stayed in most of the time and without the attention of her parents who had to work elsewhere and she just was alone at home she taught herself how to draw when she was very little and she would peek from the window and see the fashion trends of her neighbors and see what people were at that time and she would draw and she would teach herself draw that was the only thing she did uh, as a kid although she loved art and found herself and found peace in art but it was not really a good life and living in the 30s in anywhere in the world because you know what will happen the Second World War. She wanted to do something and there was a very key event that happened. She was one day going to school in a rainy day and it was slippery and she fell down and she fell next to a dead body when she was barely a teen and she knew at that time she wanted to do something about it to change and to help people to rebuild her home and her art is the secondary so she worked very hard and she was able to go to high school as a girl at that time it wasn't easy so re she really had to put all her energy into her like mathematics and the steam related subjects in a modern language so she worked very hard and she gave up art to be able to change the world and uh, she did at age of 18 she enrolled herself in a military medical academy so that she could uh, become a military doctor when China was founded things started to change and she had to uh, join another branch of the military and she was unsubscribed from the medical school she wasn't happy about it but it was the military there's no discussion so she worked in the propaganda department which is today called the communication uh, agency she worked there for four years more so after six years she served her terms in full and after she took out the military uniform she enrolled herself in the medical school ASAP she was selected by one of the best medical schools and she studied stomatology again in China stomatology was different it was like the Russian system not American system it was not like dental hygienist it was a proper doctor not a dentist so the requirement was high and she was taking a lot of notes you could see that all her notes were very colorful it was not a part of the academic requirement and she was doing that purely because she loved art and medical science at the very same time and she was coloring spinal cord and, and uterus teeth and whatnot and she would even put eyelashes on a head drawing and guess what in the medical school you really didn't have to put eyelashes and she did because she was a true artist after her training she worked as a stomatologist in a very famous uh, medical center for many years until she was almost 70 years old she had to retire due to health issues and then she became a full-time artist after that thanks to the support of her family and her friends and all her children and with the help of her 
full-time nanny she was able to practice almost like five hours every single day she was progressing and she was learning new things and even like today she was like uh, practicing and she told me that she always wanted to do something different and achieve new levels and until the end of her life that was her true passion and she had to like follow her heart one thing interesting is she would never sell her painting she would only give it for free that's again why I call her a true artist because she didn't need the money she never had to worry about money because she was a doctor and as a doctor in any part of the world it was lucrative enough to support herself and her family so she could say that whoever wants her art could just take it and she wants to give back to her community so I asked her you paint everything where does your inspiration come from and she said I just copy from a picture or from a book so I said why don't you do something different something that is from your life that is from your stories and she's like like what and I said well how about uh, teeth and heart and organs and she's like Oh really? So I showed her a picture of a heart and she started explaining me the anatomy of a heart. I was like, okay, exactly, you're so passionate, so draw this. So she drew me a heart and she said, come back and pick it up next week. I'll color it with Chinese watercolor way. I'll make it nice and come back and have your heart. I'm happy to see her, to see her art, to see her practicing happy with life. And I think she gave me a lot of good energy. Tomorrow I'm going to visit another place. And if you're interested in what is going on, just subscribe and click like and see you tomorrow.